Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm gonna share um, a very a story I haven't told too many people, and not because I'm ashamed of it, but because you need to get all the facts to know uh, kind of what happened. So I don't incriminate myself for something I didn't do. So yeah, I want to share probably the most illegal thing I've done, but it wasn't on purpose, it was on accident, and it wasn't my fault. So yeah, so a couple years ago, when I was still in college, uh, one of my friends invited me to go to a wedding, and the wedding was in California, right? So yeah, we were carpooling, and we carpooled with just like, a couple other people like uh, just I didn't really know them I only knew my friend and uh, you know one of the guys super nice we were driving his car and then there was this other guy I don't know he was just kind of weird he was kind of like even from the beginning he was very like I don't know very very much like a bro you know like nice to meet you what's your name oh my name is Blake I don't, rem I don't remember his name we'll call him Blake so yeah, so we get in the car and we start driving to California and we start to get to know each other. We start, I, say, I start to get to know Blake and he just goes off on like saying like, I don't know, he, he sells like home security systems or solar panels. So he's like a sales guy, um, I don't know. And he, he's talking about all his ideas to make a business and stuff. And I'm just rolling my eyes pretty much the whole time I don't know and he's and he's talking about oh man I have so many friends that are girls in California when we get there at the wedding we're gonna just party and I'm like okay dude whatever like I don't, I don't really know you whatever and then he started going to like very controversial kind of like things like I don't know because this was a, in 2016 right before the 2016 election and we were just talking about like politics and Donald Trump and he was like, well, like, I really like this about him and this about him. I was like, okay, dude, whatever, you know? So we finally get to California. We get there and we, and we just hang out. We just go eat, you know, we visit people. And he's always like kind of on his phone. And he's like, oh man, I'm, I'm calling up these girls. They're going to meet us tonight. And we wait and we wait, you know, we're just walking around downtown in San Diego and stuff. And he's always on his phone. And we're like, oh, like, where are your friends? And they never come. Like, these girls, they like, never show up. No one shows up. But he's like, oh, yeah, they're busy, you know, whatever. Uh, we're like, whatever, dude. Like, at this point, he's just really annoying. I don't know, we're there. And um, the, uh, the wedding day comes. You know, we all enjoy the wedding. You know, I, like I said, I didn't know the people. But I introduced myself. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm a friend of a friend. You know, congratulations. Um, so good wedding and everything and we're ready to leave the next day um, and this guy Blake he volunteers to drive uh, it, I mean it's not his car but he volunteers to drive he wants to drive but and we're like cool yeah you could drive because we're driving like kind of throughout the night and uh, we're like yeah that's cool you can go for it and then he right before we like leaving California leaving San Diego He's like, hey, I need to make a stop. Are you guys okay if I make a stop at my friend's house? Just like really out of nowhere. And we're like, okay, yeah, like that's fine. I mean, if it's on the way, cool. So yeah, we go and we go to this neighborhood, this like cul-de-sac and he goes in this house. This guy comes out with like a box. He opens the trunk and puts the box in the trunk and closes the trunk and starts driving and he's like oh yeah I just need to pick something up you know so so yeah but yeah let's head back to Utah um, he's dri he's not a very he's he's one he's one of those people that loves to like really drive really fast and pass a lot of people so he's driving pretty quickly on our way like I would say about an hour into driving or half an hour around there he's like hey guys so just so you know, because I want to be honest with you guys. I, I want to be honest with you guys. I don't want, I want to be transparent. And just in case anything happens, I need you guys to know about this. And we're just, I, you know, I look at my friends, the other guys in the car, and we're, we don't know what, what, he, what he's about to say, right? He's like, well, just so you know, what I picked up 
is an illegal like firearm an illegal gun just in case I mean we're not gonna get caught but just in case we do get like pulled over or anything and they find it just tell the cops that we won it in Vegas and we're like we're like what are you talking about we like what why are you making why are you putting this in us in this weird posit, like position and he's like I'll tell you guys the true story I'll tell you guys the true story uh, once we cross the California border because California has very strict like gun laws and he's like I, like once we're over there then I could tell you the true story of what like where I got this gun it's like a super cool gun and we're like dude the less you tell us the better I don't want to know anything about that. I don't want to be involved and we're just super mad super mad that he put us in this really bad posi uh, position and we're like I, like like I was already like kind of like thinking like dude we should just kick this guy out of the car with his gun like middle like middle of the desert just leave him there so we're just like whatever let's get home like this week's already been kind of you know like being with this guy we just let's go ahead and get home and we're probably I'm not even kidding probably like five minutes like five to ten minutes away from the California border and we're about to go into like Nevada in Nevada and uh, and he's going fast, man. He's booking it, man. He's going like a hundred. But we are like, whatever, like, you know, like, we tell him to kind of slow down. Like, my friend tells him to slow down, but he, he wants to get out of California and get home. And uh, we pass, like, a cop car. My friend sees that we pass a cop car. Like, and we're going super fast, so we pass him fast. And my friend was like, yo, dude, that was a cop car. Like, slow down. But it was too late. The cop car like turns on its lights and pulls us over. And this is when I knew. This is when I knew we were in trouble. I knew like karma was coming to get us. Even though I didn't do anything. I knew like hanging out with this guy and not kicking him out in the desert was, was, the, was the wrong choice. We should have just left him in California. We're now pulled over. He's going to check the car. He's gonna see we have this illegal firearm and we're all going to jail you know and then that, that's my new life so the cop car comes and he's like hey like can I get your driver license and you know registration he points you know the flashlight in her eyes I'm just in, in like blanket in the back you know and he asks where we're going and stuff and yeah and then he walks back to his cop car and yo we're freaking out in the car we're like, dude, I hope, like, I hope he doesn't find anything, like, 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 we don't know what's gonna happen. We have no idea what's gonna happen, right? So we just sit and wait. And he takes a while. He takes a while. He's in this cop car for a while. And then he finally comes back. He finally comes back. He gives him a ticket. And he's like, he's like, slow down, guys. You guys gotta slow down. And we're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We'll slow down. We'll 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 drive the sp speed limit, you know, whatever. And I don't know. He got like a hundred fifty dollar ticket or something like that. And like we roll up the windows, and he just starts like cursing. He's like, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe I got pulled over. And we're, dude, do you know? Do you understand like the situation we're in? And he just gets super like angry. He's just super angry about this whole thing, like the, this Blake dude. And we finally we start driving. We get to the Nevada border. First thing we do, he's like, I want to eat something. And we're like, okay, dude, whatever. Go through the drive-thru. There was like a Burger King or something, right? We go through the drive-thru. He orders a bunch of food. And then, um, I don't know. He doesn't like the way the, the, per the, the, the lady in the Burger King, like, you know, like the voice is talking to her because he, they had a hard time like listening, understanding each other. And once he orders, he's, he's like, screw this. And he just like leaves, even the, after he ordered all this food. He just like leaves. And we're like, dude, you're crazy, man. You're so crazy. And then he's like, I'm gonna tell you guys the true story now. And we're like, please, please don't tell us. We don't want to know. We, we can't be more involved in this anymore. So it turns out that him and his brother 
they went to Cal uh, they went to Mexico on a trip and they got the and on their uh, on their Mexico trip um, they bought this gun and it's like I, from what I never saw the gun but what he described it was like a pistol like a, a pistol type gun that shot like shotgun shells so super not something very conventional sounds pretty illegal we crossed the border with it and uh, we left in California with my friend but my friend he knew I was coming to California and he said he didn't want the gun anymore because you know he doesn't want it to be holding that gun and so I told him I would pick it up and and, and then he was like he's like um, let's go to St. George just stop in St. George my brother lives there We'll sleep the night, and then we'll drive the rest of the way. And yeah, at this point, we're exhausted. We're tired. And St. George is like an hour away. So we're like, okay, let's go to St. George. We'll sleep the night because we're both like, everyone's like over this whole thing. So yeah, we finally get there. We get to St. George. We get to his brother's house. We sleep. I sleep maybe an hour or two. Uh, I'm just super frustrated. I'm super mad at this whole thing. Uh, finally, in the morning, he comes. He's like, oh, this is my brother and stuff. And he's like, uh, I've decided I'm gonna stay in, like, St. George with my brother. And we're like, yes, please stay. We, like, stay here. And, and he's like, oh, and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the gun, too. And we're like, yes, of course you're gonna take the gun. Grab your gun and leave. I don't want to see your face ever again. Like, I just get in the car, give him a dirty look, and then just, like, we leave. And then we get back to uh, Utah, finally, uh, well, like, uh, Provo, and, uh, and yeah, the whole time we're just talking about, like, how crazy this whole situation is, and how close we got to, like, like going to jail for, like, something we didn't do, it wasn't our fault or at, at all, like, this guy just, like, put us in a super bad situation, and, like, from then on, I never saw that guy ever again, but, um, but yeah, um, I don't know, I don't know what the moral of the story is. Uh, maybe the moral of the story is to trust your gut and just be careful. Be careful. Don't let people put you in a weird situation like that. Like if if someone tries to hide something in your car, drop them off in the desert. It's not worth it. But yeah, you can uh, sh um, like and subscribe to keep watching more videos. And yeah, we'll talk to you next week.